Hi folks, I'm Tom Jackson. Welcome back to The Great Divide, a YouTube vlog about the disunited states of America. Conservative media has been on the warpath like never before lately, against everything that doesn't fit into its narrow-minded little cabal. Two recent events show how this has gotten way out of hand. Let's start with the words and actions of the current president. You probably heard about the groups of Trump fans who have been raging at the media upon Trump's encouragement at his rallies across the country. Trump shouts things in reference to the press like, they're the enemy of the people, and his fans go wild, screaming at the press corps at the back of the room. Of course, in Trump's case, his fans were already primed by 25 to 30 years of so-called conservative media, Fox News, a term I use loosely, and Rush Limbaugh, the veterans of the form, have raged about the liberal media, in other words, anything that isn't way to the extreme right, constantly for as long as they have been on the air. Dictators have traditionally tried to get their supporters to turn against the press. That's what is clearly happening here and now. Trump, in all his Mussolini-esque self-aggrandizement and bluster, should be reminded that as president, he is not a dictator and he is sworn to uphold the Constitution. The First Amendment states that the Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of the press. How does that relate to Trump's attack on all non-conservative media? He's trying to persuade the conservative voters to curtail or abridge the freedom of any press that isn't on their side, deeming their information fake and calling them enemies of the people. Granted, the President is in Congress, but he has the power to pull an end run around Congress. And that is exactly what he's doing here. The calls for him to stop this inflammatory, arguably inciting language have to increase, not quietly slink away and hope for the best. The other incident is the recent ousting of Alex Jones's conspiracy program from a few major social media platforms. Let's get a couple of the completely wrong arguments in this defense out of the way. This is not a First Amendment issue because Congress did not enact a law that ultimately suppressed Jones's speech, and Jones's media production is not journalism, i.e. not the press. So that takes care of any First Amendment argument on his behalf. Second, Jones hasn't been censored. He still has lots of internet presence, including his own site, and no doubt links to other far-right websites. So let's get to the real issues here. One thing that I find particularly alarming in reading the reactions defending Jones are claims that what he produces for his show is just his opinion, to which he has a right, and information, as though the fabrications he peddles have any factual value whatsoever. These arguments are completely disingenuous. Jones produces a show on which he actively fabricates stories that are not based in fact. At the top of the vacuous list of lies, is his claim that the Sandy Hook massacre of 20 children, six and seven years old, and six adults was fake. Jones asserted that the so-called deep state was involved behind the Sandy Hook incident, which he said involved a bunch of actors, all designed to try to give the government an excuse to come and take your guns away. How has our society gotten to a place where millions of people want to listen to this kind of garbage? and even take it seriously. For that matter, how do we get to a point at which many people have used the terms opinion and information in discussing Jones's deeply cynical, vicious lying? His statements about Sandy Hook were designed to create controversy, attract more viewers, and thereby generate more types of revenue for Alex Jones. How did we arrive at a point where even part of our society rushes to defend his P.T. Barnum tabloid media personality rather than genuinely empathizing with the parents whose children were slaughtered in that shooting? Are his listeners simply incapable of understanding what a real and horrifying tragedy they had already been through? And then their media hero capitalizes on their suffering by broadcasting unthinkable lies about them. What the hell has happened to us? Alex Jones may or may not be an unhinged lunatic. In his divorce child custody litigation last year, his lawyers told the judge that his show is all an act, after his now ex-wife's attorney tried to get full custody of the children 
for the wife by pointing to how unhinged Alex is. The fact is, whether he's clinically certifiable or not, the endless lies he tells on his show, all to further enrich himself at anyone else's expense, show that he is a vicious person. By the way, Trump and some other conservatives may consider viciousness a good quality, but I don't. Not surprisingly, Jones's ex-wife has been quoted as saying that he's even worse off-camera than on. In Jones's show, he portrays an unhinged, far-right, paranoid lunatic, but every word he utters is very purposeful, carefully crafted, and all designed to get him and his show noticed and thereby bring in millions in revenue. And he has succeeded. What that says about his Sandy Hook lies and his subsequent responses to any backlash for telling those lies is that he treats the actions of his fans, a few of whom are already in jail for harassing and threatening Sandy Hook families, is that for him, it was all about capitalizing on the immense suffering of the Sandy Hook families. What kind of disgusting parasite does that kind of thing? It's called an Alex Jones. Truth is, he runs a business but it is not a production based on his opinion or on reliable information. It is based on lies. As a result, some of the Sandy Hook families are suing him for things like defamation and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Thank goodness that there are still legal measures that can be taken in a case like this. Jones has a right to self-expression, but when he broadcasts lies as vacuous as the ones he told about Sandy Hook victims and their families, they have a right to bring legal repercussions against him. Personally, I hope they win bigly. For The Great Divide, I'm Tom Jackson.